Howdy drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumstheword.com. Welcome to this free mini song lesson where I'm going to teach you the main, the coolest, the best parts, pretty much the only parts to the song Ramble On by Led Zeppelin, drummed by the legendary tub thumper himself, John Bonham of course. And I've got a, three, a free PDF for you to download today. I've got um, the main grooves, all the drum fills, even the middle section of the song as well. Um, you can download both these pages from my website for free. You'll find a link beneath this video. So have these printed out in front of you as we go through this together. And uh, this song is suggested over on my Facebook page. And so if you want to make your own song suggestions, then go over there to do so. You'll find a link to my page beneath this video. And you might want to consider signing up to become an online member at my website, drumstheword.com, where I offer hundreds of full video song lessons. But we'll talk about that more at the end of the lesson. So. We start off with the tempo, 98 BPM. It's worth pointing out um, um, that uh, 16th note pattern that Bonham is playing um, uh, throughout the, the, the quieter sections of the song's song and uh, what it might be. No one really knows, actually. I, I googled it and um, there's loads of different um, theories as to what he's playing on. Um, it could be a guitar case, could be a plastic bin I heard, could be a leather chair. Um, uh, but when I saw um, a few drummers attempt to play it live, a few of them came up with some good ideas how to replicate it if you haven't got a, a guitar case set up next to you. Simply put a, floor to, um, a towel over the floor tom to completely dampen it and then play um, your 16th notes on the floor tom, dampened. What I used to do when I played it live is I used to play it as, as uh, just a, a, a um, cross stick thing. I used to play um, here or here, it doesn't really matter what, what drum you use, but I, I'd use the, the uh, the rim of the drum to replicate that. Just a little bit of uh, a little bit of thoughtfulness about that section. Um, so then we come on with uh, uh, the, where John comes in with the drums at 107, um, and he comes in with his drum fill. And it's also worth pointing out here that uh, all the 16th notes are slightly swung, as as most of Bonham's playing um, is. Um, so we get so instead of getting one e and a two e and a, we kind of get a one e and a two e and a kind of feel to it. But you'll see what I mean when I play this drum fill. It comes in on the E of beat three. One and two and three e and. And we get left right. I use that sticking, that's, that's what John would have used. One and two and three e and. And then four e and. So one and two and three e and, four e and. So coming in there on the E of beat three, just after the beat, and it ends with four e and. But you can hear that slight swing to the drum fill. If I play it straight, one and two and the e and, four e and. It doesn't sound quite the same as the recording. If I swing it slightly, one and two and the e and four e and, it sounds more like John's playing. So just be aware of that very subtle difference there between straight and swung 16th notes. So then we go into the main groove and what a groove it is. And I'm not going to do John uh, Bonham justice. I tried to get this to sound nice a few times and um, I can't get it to groove as well as John. Don't know what the secret is. I guess it's just talent. Um, but we've got a two bar drum beat here. Uh, really good fun to play. A little bit challenging though, I must admit, for new drummers and intermediate drummers, but well worth your time having a practice at because it's just, it's filled with loads of cool ideas. So the first bar starts with a crash cymbal on beat one and um, we've got, without the ghost notes, we've got this pattern for the first half of the bar. One and a two and three. One, a two and three. One, a two and In fact, let's continue for the rest of the bar. Um, uh, so the second half of the bar, we get this, probably the trickiest bit for most drummers, is putting the bass drum in between the hi-hats, three E and a, four E and a. So that hi-hat is keeping time on the, on the eighth note downbeat, but uh, we're putting these upbeat 16th notes on the bass drum, three E and a, four E and a. So again, that bar without the ghost notes, one, a two, and three E and a, four E and a, one. One, a two, and three E and a, four E and a, one. So going back to the beginning of the bar, let's try and put those ghost notes in. They're the notes written in brackets. They're played um, little taps on the snare drum, played quietly. We get one E and a two E. And this is kind of a, a cool idea here, where you play a snare drum backbeat on two or four, wherever it is, and you followed, it's followed by a ghost note. It's an accent uh, followed by a, a, a ghost note. So if you can't get these ghost notes to sound quiet, it's not gonna sound correct. It should be. That's the really important bit to make the ghost notes sound as quiet as possible and, and fill them in nicely between the hi-hats. So we get one E and a two E, straight into and, 
and uh, and another little ghost note there at the end of beat two on the uh of two, and uh, and uh, three e and uh, four e and uh. So slow you that bar around a few times. One, uh, two e and uh, three e and uh, four e and uh. One, uh, two e and uh, three e and uh, four e and uh. Let's go to the next bar before we speed it up a bit. Next bar's a bit simpler, but we've got that, um, that snare accent followed by a ghost note thing again. One, one, for each of the beats. One E and, two E and, three E and, four E and. And what John does is he pushes it into each beat with a bass drum. One E and, uh. One E and, uh, two E. So it goes straight into the next beat with a bass drum. At the end of the line, we get the bass drum on the uh of beat four, which loops around to the beginning of the bar, so we actually get a one the first time he plays it. Every other time he plays it in the song, he instead of playing that um, bass drum on the uh of beat four, he plays a ghost note instead. But that's our next example, so we'll go into that in a bit. So those two bars um, together, one, a two, e, and a three, e, and a four, e, and a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, and a three, a four E and a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. Even slower, then we speed it up. One, a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. And uh, just uh, a little bit faster. So now let's hear uh, the intro of drum fill, those two bars looped around, and you'll see that I'm also playing the next example as I loop it around a few times. So here we go, without the microphone on, up to speed. So our next example is basically the, the, um, the looping of that groove. It occurs at 1 minute 13, so the, the, the first three bars there we just went over, the first three bars of the song, and then um, every, uh, every other time he plays this section, it's, it's these two bars that he's playing. And the only difference is, as I said previously, is that last bar, second bar, the uh of beat four is a ghost note instead of a bass drum note. He only plays that bass drum pattern a one once, right at the beginning. Most The rest of the time, he's then playing one, a two, e and a three, e and a four, e and a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, e. So we get this and a one, e as it loops. Four, e and a one, e, a two, e and a four, e and a one, e and a two, e and a. So lots of little ghost notes there, but they're all falling in between the right hand. So just for fun, let's hear those two bars played around a few times. Then we go on to the next section, 1 minute 23. It's really the end of this, this first section. Um, and it's, it's, I'm sort of showing you how he plays that drum fill at the end. So the first bar is, is our groove. And then for bar two, we get two of these. But then for beat three, he plays, instead of playing three E, which you could do, by the way, you could put the ghost note in on the E of three, but on the recording, John doesn't. He just plays three and a, uh, and a little ghost note there, three and uh, then he comes down to the snare drum to play four E and, and then rather cool, and it's, it's subtle, you might miss it, there's a little ghost note at the end, four E and uh, four E and uh. So he's using loads of dynamics here. I'm not 100% sure of the sticking he would have used. Um, he might have used some sort of form of paradiddle there, uh, but I think it would have been single stroke, um, and it works, you know, so it, you know, it works for me anyway, a uh, four E and, um, a four E and a, a four E and a, a four E and a. So let's loop it around a few times. Let's loop the second bar. One, a two, a three, and a four E and a. One, a two, a three, and a four E and a. 
So you can, of course, leave out that ghost note at the end of the bar. No one's going to miss it because you play, you just play four E and instead of a four E and as well. But it's there on the recording. Very cool. So let's hear that played a couple of times as well. So then we got the middle eight in the middle, or the bridge, um, and it's a slightly different drum beat now. We get uh, the first part, it's just the same as we've already done. One, a two, e, and a. I notice there's a crash cymbal, because the first time he goes into it, there is a crash cymbal on beat one. One, a two, e, and a. But then instead of, instead of playing three, e, and a, four, e, and a, he plays this. Three, e, and a, four, e, and a. And a ghost note there at the end on the a, uh, four. Three, E, and a, uh, four, E, and a. Uh. Little sneaky bass drum there on the E of beat four. Three, E, and a, uh, four, E, and a. Uh. Three, E, and a, uh, four, E, and a. Uh. So that bar, one, E, a, two, E, and a, uh, three, E, and a, uh, four, E, and a. Uh. Now the second bar, and indeed the third bar, which I haven't included, um, he then, um, it's exactly the same as what we just did there, but there's no bass drum after beat four on the E. He just plays four, as we see. So the second bar, one, a two, E, and a, three, E, and a, four, and a. Instead of four, E, and a, for the second and third bar, he plays four, and a. So, subtle difference there. But the two bars together, one, a two, E, and a, three, E, and a, four, E, and a, one, a two, E, and a, three, E, and a, four, and a, one. So if you, uh, uh, for the third bar you play. Um, so let's hear those two bars played up to speed. So then to page two and uh, we've got another drum fill he plays. I believe it's the end of uh, the bridge. Looking at the timestamp, yes, it's roughly going to be, I think it's the end of the bridge, he plays this drum fill. So the bar starts one, a uh, two, and a, uh, and a normal s s uh, volume snare drum on the uh of two there. One, a uh, two, and a, uh. straight into beat three, a uh, three. Then he comes down to the snare drum, and we get, uh, without the ghost notes, three and four E and, but he fills in the gaps there. Three E and a, uh, four E and, three E and a, uh, four E and. You can sort of hear those notes in between the main pattern. That's what you're really hearing, but it, you're feeling underneath it. So that bar, one, a two, a three, and four, and. And up to speed a couple of times. So then finally we've got the outro and um, this occurs at the last section of the song uh, and Bonham is just going for it. He's just playing this pattern uh, or this, this, this beat's worth of notes for four beats every bar. He's playing one E and uh. So again it's that one E thing, that accent ghost note and then and uh each time. And just to make another point about uh, making sure those ghost notes sound quiet, if you played um, all those snare drum notes at uh, the same volume, you'd get. Which doesn't sound like the recording. So make sure you get those ghost notes correct. And then finally, let's hear that up to speed as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any questions, email me, robertdrumstheword.com. Don't forget to download both pages of this free PDF from my website. Again, the link is beneath this video. If you want to make your own song suggestions, then go over to my Facebook page. You'll find the link also beneath this video. And then you might want to consider signing up to become an online member, as I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, 
where I teach you um, uh, songs from start to finish, every single bar, every single beat. Unlike this lesson where I just taught you the main parts, in my full song lessons I teach you every single beat, fill, and even drum solo if it includes it, from start to finish. And I've got over 400 famous and popular songs on the website already. You get the fully transcribed drum chart with each of those video lessons. And I've got a load of uh, Led Zeppelin stuff up on the website already, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more Led Zeppelin lessons coming in the future. As a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds of little videos teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and solos. I give you three ebooks I've written over the years containing, guess what? Hundreds more famous drum beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record new lessons every week, unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about any of that, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, Ramble on, doodle pip, and um, happy drumming to you.